Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can create and 3D print your own custom QR codes just like this. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that you can do it. One is gonna be for if you have a Bamboo Lab printer with an AMS, and then there's gonna be another method where you can use any kind of 3D printer, whether it's an old Ender 3 or a printer that just came out yesterday, but doesn't have the multicolor printing capabilities, you're still gonna be able to do that and still gonna be able to get the two color effect. And your QR codes are gonna come out looking something similar to this. And if you happen to scan this QR code, it's gonna take you to the figure feed back YouTube page. So that's pretty cool. So why would you even want to have a QR code? Well, it kind of depends on what you want to use it for. You can use it to direct people to a particular website, or you can have some personal information embedded in a QR code, such as your name and your phone number and some contact information, something that you can put on luggage, for example. Or you can embed some Wi-Fi credentials in a QR code so that people can just scan the QR code to log on to a Wi-Fi network as opposed to trying to find the password and asking you and having to put it in for them and stuff like that. So there's a few different ways that you can take advantage of QR codes, but let me show you how to make them. The first thing that we're going to do is use Maker World. And Maker World, even though that's more of a Bamboo Lab thing, you don't need to have a Bamboo Lab printer in order to take advantage of this, because all we're going to be doing is generating a QR code. But here's the page that we're going to be using. It is the Ultimate QR Code Generator, Text, Wi-Fi, and more. There's other pages like this from other creators, but I'm just going to use this one. So you do need to make an account for Maker World in order to engage in this. But if you choose to do so and you log in, you can go down to customize right here. So give that a click. And then this little box is going to come up here. Make sure that the circle is checked and then hit customize. And then this next page is going to come up is going to let you customize your parameters. So as you can see here in this drop down box, we have text, we have Wi-Fi, we have phone call, and then we have V-Card. And V-Card is for where you can put all that personal information if you choose. But for this example, I am going to just create the figure feedback QR code, show you how I did that. So in this case, I'm gonna go down to text type and by default it says hello world, but I'm just gonna delete that and I'm gonna put in the URL for figure feedback YouTube channel, which is this right here. And from there, you can also customize this some more. You can change the dimensions to increase or decrease the overall size, the border size, the background thickness, or the QR code thickness. You can add a hole if you want to attach your QR code to a key ring. And then you can also add some labels. You can add some text if you want, either on the top or on the bottom, and you can have it just say whatever it is that you want it to say. And then you can change the font as well but I'm just gonna leave everything as it is with the exception of the web address that I want you to go to. So from here, I'm just gonna hit generate. And here is the QR code that I have. So at this point, I can just download the STL right here and I can save it to my computer. Now, even though I did this in Maker World, it doesn't mean you have to use a Bamboo Lab printer to do it. In fact, I'm going to use this QR code and I printed out this on the Flash Forge Adventure 5M. So I'm going to head over to Orca Flash Forge to show you how you can get this to print in two colors. So here I am in Orca Flash Forge, and I'm just using Orca Flash Forge because I just feel like using it right now. But it's pretty much the same thing as Orca Slicer, so all the steps are going to be the same. Orca Flash Forge is just a special offshoot of that slicer, specifically for um, some Flash Forge printers. All right, so it's not different really, so no need to worry. So first thing that I did was I imported the QR code that we got from Maker World. And here it is right here. You see how small it is? And then we got this error down here for non-manifold edges with no way to repair it, but it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna click off that. Now, as for the settings, everything is pretty much basic. I'm using the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I have the layer height set to just the standard layer height, 0.2 millimeters. I didn't change anything here. No speed changes, no seam settings. Everything is the same. For the strength, 
I change the infill density down to eight. It can be 10, you can leave it at 15, whatever. I just changed it to eight. And then the infill pattern, I chose it to be gyroid. And then over here for supports, you don't need any support. So let me make sure that that's not enabled. Okay, great. So there's no supports, no nothing. We are done here pretty much. So I'm just gonna hit slice plate. And as you can see, it's going to take on this printer only 11 minutes and 12 seconds to print this at this particular size. But also, let me show you something real quick. You can make this bigger if you want. And if you choose to make it bigger and everything is uniform, you'll also notice that the thickness of this is going to change for the Z right there. So if you don't want it to be quite as thick, if you want it to be as thin as this is here, but you want it to be bigger, just make sure that you bring that Z back down to where it was originally, which is 1.60. And that's going to make everything nice and thin. But at the same time, the rest of the QR code is going to be bigger. All right. But I'm just going to reset this back to where it was originally. All right. So let's go to slice plate. So we're not quite done yet because we wanted to have that two tone effect. We want to have it to be white on the background and we want the QR codeness to be in the black filament. And here's how you do that. So what you're going to have to do is go over here to this slider here and you see as you're moving this slider down, the print is being, uh, the layers from the print is being separated all the way down to its first layer. What we need to do is find the point where the black part of the QR code is going to start. So for example, let's say we start it like right here at five. It looks like it's starting to print the black part of the QR code. But if we scroll this slider all the way down to the beginning, we can see what's actually happening. You see it's making these weird patterns around here, but then it starts filling it in. And since we're starting things off with white, you'll see that if we switched over to black at this point, then all of this is going to be black. And then we'll have to print black on black. And that's not the way to go. So this is not the layer that we want to have. If we move this up to layer six and then start that at the beginning, we can see that this background has already been established, which is white. And then even though it has some of the markings already at the bottom, it's okay because now is where the real magic happens. Now this is what the black is going to look like. And this is going to fill in all of those spots. So we got the background is done. So we need to start this off once the background is done, but before it really starts putting in all the squiggly lines. So this is where we want it to stop. So at this point, I'm just going to right click on this. I'm going to add pause. And then that's it. The rest is just going to be left alone. Now in your FlashForge printer, once you send this over to it, it doesn't have to be a FlashForge printer. It can be any other printer. Once it reaches this layer six right here, it is going to pause. At this point, you can manually change your filament, resume the print, and then the black is going to go on top of the white and it's going to come out looking just like this. So remember, if you choose to change the Z, the thickness of it, then the layer may not be six. So I'll show you just real quick here. Let me go back to this and I'll just change the Z. So I'm just going to say, I want this, I want this to be thicker. So I'm going to have this be three and now everything is thicker. Go back to slice plate. And now as I'm going down here, if I start at layer six now, you see that this is layer six. We haven't even gotten to printing any of the QR code. This is just infill. So if I stopped it right here, it's gonna not work. It's gonna be kind of disastrous. So now, since you made the Z thicker, now you have to find the point where that QR code is gonna to start to print from the beginning. In this case, is gonna be right here at layer 10 instead. All right, so just keep that in mind if you want to change the thickness of it. All right, so that's how you can do this with any other kind of printer if you use the Maker World way of doing it. Now I'm gonna show you another way that doesn't require Maker World and you'll be able to use it on the Bamboo Lab printer with the AMS. 
This website is called qrstl.com and it lets you do pretty much the same thing that we just did in Maker World. You can make a QR code for 3D printing and you can use text and URL, you can do Wi-Fi, you can do email, you can do the contact information, which is the V card, or you can do SMS. For this one, I'm going to make a QR code that's going to take you to my website, which is jeremyhill.biz that just has a collection of videos that I've done on my two YouTube channels, kind of like an at a glance look of the type of videos that I do. So here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to put in my website address, which is jeremyhill.biz right here. And then as we go down, you'll see that you can also change some aspects of the QR code. You can make it a regular rectangle or you can do a rounded rectangle. You can change the width, the, the depth, the corner radius. There's going to be a border around it. So you can change the border width and the border depth. Pretty decent options that you can have here. You can also add some text to it. So let's add text. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say add the words portfolio. And portfolio is going to be placed at the bottom of the QR code. You can also change the positioning of it. I have it right here in the center. You can change the text size, the margin, the depth. You can add a keychain hold if you want and a spot for an NFC or RFID tag if you want to do that. But I'm not. I'm just going to keep it very basic. I'm going to hit generate 3D model. And here is what the QR code is going to look like. So at this point, I can just click Save as STL right here. And now I'm going to open this up in Bamboo Studio and show you how you can do this with the AMS. So here I am in Bamboo Studio, which is pretty much the exact same thing as Orca Slicer. It's all based on the same stuff. So pretty much everything is going to be the same for the most part. But here I am, I have it imported. And as you can see, this QR code is naturally bigger and thicker than the one created from the one that we got on Maker World, which is completely fine. Standard quality settings on this 0.4 millimeter nozzle, standard 0.2 layer height. Only thing that I'm really changing is the infill density. I changed it to 10% and then I'm going to use the cross hatch infill pattern because that's what Bamboo Studio came up with and I like it fine. So I'm using it. No supports, no other changes, no nothing. So let's just go to slice plate. Now, the cool thing about using the AMS is when you choose the different colors that you want, it actually will show up here in the actual model itself. So we're, we need to do the exact same thing that we did with the last model, which is try to find the point where the black part of the QR code is going to start to print. This is a different model, so we can't start at layer six anymore because as you can see, it's just laying down the first layers and the first line. So we need to find out exactly where it's going to start to print the QR code letters. So let's say 16, that looks about right, because if we move this all the way to the beginning, we'll see the first thing that is going to do is start writing portfolio. And we know that we need to have that portfolio in black so that it can show up on the white background. If I move down to 15 and try to do it, you can see that 15 is still filling in the background. And that's what we want to be white. So we're going to just leave that and we're going to go back up to 16. So this is where we're going to start. In this case, we're going to right click on the plus sign, go to change filament, not just add pause because we got an AMS It's going to do the work for us. We're going to go to change filament and I'm going to say go to black because I already have that loaded up. So I'm going to slice it again. And now we can see that this is what the QR code is going to look like once it is finished printing. It's going to start off like this. And by the time it's done, hey, that looks good. Looks perfect, right? This is going to take a little over an hour to print and it is going to take uh, in total 32 grams of filament with only 0.22 grams that's being flushed or wasted with two filament changes. So it's really not a big deal at all. But anyway, I'm going to send this over to the printer, get it printed up and let's check out what it looks like. 
This is the result from the Bamboo Lab printer and like pretty much everything that I've printed on that printer so far, it just came out looking beautiful. And like I said, this is that off-white color that I like for printing models. I don't have a clear white that was ready for the uh, Bamboo Lab uh, AMS at the moment, but this is good enough and it looks good. And you can scan this and it'll take you over to that website, Jeremy Hill. Biz. But anyway, those are the two methods that you can use to make your own customized QR codes. Whether or not you have an AMS, you can still do it as long as you got a couple of rolls of filament that look good with each other when they're printed in this manner. So uh, yeah, I hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, definitely let us know down in the comments. And I want to thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.